UFC 276 is packed. In fact, I would actually go as far as to say that it's totally stacked with high intrigue matchups from top to bottom. Obviously, the bulk of our attention will be on the pair of title fights that conclude the evening's entertainment. But even from the earliest prelims, there are more than a few reasons to tune in from the get-go. So with that in mind, here are seven fighters to keep your eye on when UFC 276 goes down this weekend. Dricus Duplessis. Certain fighters in MMA you just kind of look at and are like, yeah, that's one of my boys right there. And on today's list of seven featured fighters, there just so happens to be two of MMA Dive's certified boys making an appearance. The first of the two is Dricus Duplessis, a former KSW standout who is a violence merchant at his core. Through 18 professional fights, the dude has never once been to the scorecards, losing an early submission in his first five outings, before then embarking on an eight-year streak of chaos that was only broken up by a knockout loss to the great Roberto Soldic, a man who Duplessis had actually knocked out in their first fight. And I'm happy to report that after two UFC appearances, he doesn't appear to be slowing down in his pursuit of finishes. And following two straight knockouts, the promotion have given him a crack at Brad Tavares, the immeasurably tough Hawaiian number 12 ranked middleweight in the world. I'm not certain of how far Duplessis can actually go within the middleweight ranks, but I am willing to put my support fully behind him because win, lose or draw, this is certainly going to be one electric prelim showcase. Macy Barber. Look, the whole beating John Jones's record as the youngest ever UFC champion thing was a bit ambitious, but I certainly still do have a lot of interest in where the Macy Barber story ends up. Even if I do believe that the two fight losing streak she endured during the pandemic should actually be a three fight streak of defeats because of that dodgy decision she earned against Miranda Maverick. But I do still consider myself intrigued because at 125 pounds right now, there is obviously a gulf between the very elite of the elite and the rest of them. And in the four fights that put Barber's name on the map, her contender series finish in 2018, and then the three knockouts that opened her UFC account, I did see promise. Indeed, she is an easy target for criticism and hate because of the hype machine that pushed her and the incredibly strange comments she made after her loss to Roxanne Modafferi. But let's not forget that Barber is still just 24 years old and she's already a 12th fight veteran, winning with a 70% finishing rate. At the very least, I do think that her fight against Jessica I will give us a glimpse into where her progression is at and a victory here would certainly act as a springboard into the top 10. Andre Muniz. Any time Andre Muniz gets a mention on this channel, I have to bring up the whole Jacare thing, and this time will be no exception. Now riding a three-fight streak of submission victories, Muniz really did find his way onto my radar with that incredible win over Ronaldo Jacare Souza. Ahead of that fight, he did leave a lot of people scratching their heads when he promised to tap one of the all-time great MMA Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu transitioners, and on paper, while the dude had more than a few submissions on his record, the idea that he would be able to pull one off on Jacare, even an aging Jacare, it was a little silly. But then he went out there and broke his arm in the first round. And no matter which way I tried to draw it up, I had to put my hand up in the air and say I was wrong. That takes a certain level of confidence, a certain level of cheek. And if I'm being totally honest, while some people might call it disrespectful to an aging veteran of the game, as a means of getting your name out there, Andre Muniz managed to skip the queue in a big way. He's three for three with submissions over his last three fights. And with Uriah Hall in front of him, I think there's an opportunity here for a showcase if he can get that fight to the mat. If he can't, well, there is the interest. If Uriah Hall does in fact show up in a way, in the type of way that he is capable of doing every now and then, who knows, this one could get dicey. On a quick side note, if you're enjoying this content and would like to stay up to date with all of our weekly uploads, be sure to subscribe to the channel now, just so you can continue to tune in and play witness to my attempts to toe the line between unforgivable bias and just being a bit overly enthusiastic about MMA Dive's certified boys. We also have a Patreon account, so if you want to help in supporting the channel, you can find the link in the description. Ian Gary. Ian Gary gets a lot of hate for reasons that are both warranted and a bit over the top. As an Irishman myself, I've been very high on him for years now, especially during his Cage Warriors run, a run that saw him take on a pretty strong level of competition consistently before eventually capturing promotional gold at 170 pounds. And though his two UFC appearances have shown some issues, the dude is still quite young, and I would honestly back him to round out his game over the coming years, eventually moving past the whole wannabe McGregor label that has been both trust upon him and also brought about by his own actions and words. Remember, he's a young man 
man growing up in Ireland, and I can tell you from experience the McGregor thing was hard to avoid. Anyway, putting all of that to one side, this fight will showcase a long rangy finisher whose highlight reel is already pretty stacked. I know that many of you will wince at the suggestion that he has real promise, but I would be willing to bet that he will prove more than a few doubters wrong over the next few fights. That begins on Saturday night, and for me, again, given my Irishness, this is certainly a standout bout on the prelims. Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner is one of those fighters that really ended up surprising me with his resurgence. At 27, he had already notched up appearances at both World Series of Fighting and Bellator before the UFC came a knocking. Funnily enough, he actually fought and knocked out Gabriel Green back in 2017 in Bellator. And now, five years later, both men will be competing on the same UFC card. But trivia aside, Turner's first few UFC outings were indeed a little inconsistent, as he floated down from welterweight to lightweight after losing to the future elite. Vicente Luque, before then 155 pounds brought him to a defeat against the underrated Matt Favola. But then he did find his momentum, and when he found it, boy did he take off. Four straight finishes followed at 155 pounds, including a TKO of Jamie Malarkey and a submission of Uros Medic, a guy who I was and still am pretty damn high on. All of a sudden, this electric finisher is right on the cusp of breaking into the top 15. And with Brad Riddell standing between him and some huge matchups, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. It is difficult to point to a single fight of the night candidate or standout on a card like this, but I think the odds for a finish here are pretty high. That much I will say. Brad Riddell. I told you it was coming. But here, in the featured prelim bout between Brad Riddell and the aforementioned Jalen Turner, we have the second officially recognized MMA Dive certified boy. Brad Riddell is an awesome talent, and in many ways, I do think he was the victim of some hasty matchmaking in being set up against Rafael Fiziev when he was. Coming out of city kickboxing, Riddell displayed all types of toughness in that bout. Grit. And maybe a bit of old man strength, if that makes sense. Pushing Fiziev to the limit before eventually eating that wonderful spinning wheel kick in the third round that did spell his doom. But even with that loss on his record, he's still certainly right in the mix at 155 pounds, and a win over someone like Jalen Turner could well prove to be a catapult into a top 10 matchup. There is something of a transition happening at 155 pounds right now, and I do think that over the next year or so, we're about to see the likes of Matthias Gamrot, Armin Saryukian, Fiziev, and potentially the winner of this fight, start to chip away at the older dogs at the top of the pile, the Poiriers, the Gaethys, the Oliveiras, the McGregors. And given just how electric lightweight has been over the years, I do think that it's only going to benefit the weight class in its growth. Alex Pereira. And finally, we come to the pay-per-view main card debut of the former kickboxing great Alex Pereira, the only main card fighter who's going to make an appearance on this list. Now most of you at this stage will know all about the history shared between Israel Adesanya and this one-time pound-for-pound great Pereira. Obviously he got the better of Izzy through a huge knockout, and after announcing his desire to transition to MMA, Dana White and the UFC were only too happy to fast track him into the top 10. Of course two victories were needed beforehand, victories that showcased him looking pretty good and totally lethal in spots. But the general idea has always been to really try and race him up those middleweight rankings. The dude is approaching 35, and if the UFC want their cross-discipline rematch, there is a certain level of haste that is needed. And that haste has caused the UFC to set Alex up against none other than Sean Strickland. Now this fight, oddly enough, is definitely one of the more winnable matchups for the Brazilian. Win, lose or draw, however, this one should be an incredibly interesting fight context aside. And that's kind of why he's getting on the list. When you put the Israel Adesanya connection to one side, the stylistic clash here could present issues for both men, especially if Strickland does want to take things out of the striking realm, which, to be honest, I'm not 100% convinced he will do. But as far as UFC 276's entire lineup is concerned, which fighters are you most excited to see make the walk? Do let us know your opinions in the comment section below, we always love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching.